Welcome to episode 69 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Jacksonville Candidates and Spike Cohen. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time, and Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today, and then applying that to those around me. In the last episode, I brought in three Libertarian candidates for Jacksonville City Council in studio for a fun and lively chat. This episode, we add Spike Cohen and continue to have fun and discuss matters of liberty. With that, let's dive right in. I guess I'll go ahead and start it off, man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do well, that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, my name is Ronald Teresa Robinson. For the new viewers watching, uh, Ronald Teresa Robinson. I'm running for City Council District 8 in Jacksonville, Florida. And Spike, I want to say I want to thank you for following us and kind of giving us a, a heads up on things. And um, we've been following you for quite a while. It's very inspiring. It's given me a lot of ideas as far as how I'm going to conduct my campaign and things that I want to do moving forward. And because at first I was having a little bit of trouble trying to have something to snack my teeth on and really bite in until I started seeing and, um, and being aware about what the city is doing as far as what they're doing with our tax money that we all pay in order to do frivolous uh, things like uh, taking down Confederate statues or putting $400 million in the shipyard projects or um, renaming schools. Because um, coming this week, I'm going to go to these different schools in Duval County. I called them yesterday and um, I was trying to conduct an interview or set them up to ask these questions such as, um, since changing the names of these schools, and there are six of them that's been changed in Duval County, five that are in effect. And like, you know, Kirby Smith, uh, Stonewall Jackson, Robert E. Lee, things of that nature. And from one of the schools, they said that it's a very good question. And she was really excited uh, for me to have the interview with her. And she said that, no, it hasn't changed anything. Matter of fact, it's been, been getting a little bit worse um, in the ranking since they changed the school. Because the question was, did it improve the school's grades? Did it boost the morale? Did it make right. the, uh, uh, you know, did it make profit? Did it break even for what they've been doing? And with the, uh, the statue that's in Springfield Park in, um, in Jacksonville, I'm gonna go do a survey, put it together, go to Springfield in that area. It's not in my district, but we're all still paying the same taxes for it. I wanna go and ask them, hey, would you rather take this one statue down or do you want that $1.3 million to go into fixing up the wiring in your, uh, in your homes, the roofing, the streets, the potholes, anything you know, like that? Because what the, uh, the mayor is doing by way of the city council is placating to the mob in order to um, increase government expansion and to create a little more destitution in Jacksonville. So that's one of the things I'm going to be um, moving forward with uh, with my campaign. So, yeah. Well, I think that's really good, man. And I think it's important to and, and I am from what I'm hearing from all three of you seeing on your social media is that it's becoming about or it has been about reaching the residents of Jacksonville where they are, because I think what's happening so much is the governance that's happening in Jacksonville, and this is true everywhere, is politicians telling the people there what they need. Mm -hmm. They're, like, they're, they're telling us telling... what the problem is so they can give us the solution. Exactly. They're saying exactly. the problem Even is Even though this. they created the issue in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. And so, for example, if you're a politician that's trying to, you know, get uh, curry favor and get donations and get your name out there to you, the biggest problem that the city is facing is a statue that's been there however many, you know, 100 plus years. And even I'm even putting aside the question of whether the statue should be there or not. If instead they talked with the residents of the people living there, I have a feeling that they would probably put a higher prioritization on other stuff, like, for example, potholes or, you know, sidewalks or something of that nature. So things that I may not even think of, because, again, I don't live in Jacksonville. So exactly. I think it's important what you and, and, and what um, uh, it says Harrison here. I know it's not Harrison. What you and Tub and, uh, and Eric are doing uh, is important to hear. Well, we're going to call you Harrison. Who's Harrison? Um, but, about, who's Harrison? I'm, I'm using a friend's account because I was. Yeah, oh. it's a... <laughs> All right, I just said about how good he is, and he's bootlegging somebody else's account. Like, put the two bucks up so you can run oh, your own God. thing here. Yeah. Now, Listen, Harrison, <laughs> Harrison, I greatly appreciate what you're trying to do. But so, Eric, let me ask you something, man. What what is uh, you know what was it that brought you into um into deciding that you wanted to run with Ron and, uh, and, and with Harrison, what, what, what made you want to do that? So, uh, I'm not Harrison, actually, he's I, Harrison. 
<laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. Harrison's friend, Tub. Harrison's yeah. friend, Tub. What, what made you decide you were? They were so confused. So, uh, Who the heck is Harrison? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I actually, I used to work at a uh, local craft brewery in Jacksonville. And uh, I remember, I think it was 2020, the beginning of the lockdowns and pandemics in the state of Florida. A lot of people want to give the Republican governor, Ron DeSantis, a lot of credit for being this freedom-loving guy. But yep. his, uh, his cabinet, if you will, closed down the brewery that I worked at. And all craft breweries, every restaurant, everything, for almost three months. And I watched a small family-owned brewery almost got a business. So, and then we were allowed to open back up. And after we opened back up, the Jacksonville City Council passed Ordinance 2020-0759, which would fine any small business up to $500 if they had 50 or more people on their property that weren't social distancing, wearing masks, this, that, and the other. So I went to go to speak up at City Council for that issue. And on that same night that I could speak on that issue was on the agenda, so was the issue where they wanted to give over $100 million to a billionaire owner, Jacksonville Jaguars owner, Shad Khan, to build, at the time it was the Lot J project. It was an entertainment district, essentially. So they want to find small businesses $500 for trying to stay open because at the first three months they were closed, if they didn't open in two weeks, they told me uh, they were going to be out of business but they were allowed to open back up and they're still open to this day, but they yeah. wanted to take $500 from a small business to give a hundred million dollars to a billionaire. So from that point, moving forward, I uh, started speaking up at city council, just getting involved. I left the Republican party for the libertarian party in 2020. And uh, I haven't missed the Republican party at all since, because they no longer, for but that they, miss, they miss you though let's make that very clear they yeah. miss you oh, they miss you I, I bet i don't know that they miss me but they, they definitely know i think they know who i am i don't even say they definitely but they they know who we are so um but uh, yeah that's why i decided to get involved um and i'm gonna take credit right now i'm the guy that as soon as i uh met ronald tracy robeson for jacksonville city council he was just the guy that i'd never met before and the day that i met him him and I had a conversation, and I was like, "You need to run for all." So I'm going to take credit for that. But yes, well, yeah, well, good. Well, then, question. so then you have credit for two things: one, you, you decided to step up yourself, and two, you decided to get Ron. And Ron, what was your reason for for deciding that you wanted to run? The reason I want okay, there was a I, I don't really, I really don't have an inciting incident that I can point to and say, "Yeah, that's what it is." Other than being right. inspired by everyone by going to these uh, the libertarian meetings that we'd have, the business meetings and the socials, by just talking to people and um, bringing to light so many things that I never even considered before going into the party. Because I registered as libertarian like the next day, uh, well, the day before and the next day I went to the meetings and I'm meeting these guys and it opened my eyes to so much. Now, there was a speaker there. I'm gonna mention his name. I don't know if it'll be appropriate, but he was there and he was speaking about things such as, um, you know, reparations, talking about, uh, so more social, more social justice oriented, which is just fine, but it's the matter of asking the government to intrude on every possible measure in order to see these things get implemented and get finished is what was what I had a big problem with. And I've known him for right. years, you know, prior to that time. And it was a fact that there were so many things that he hadn't considered as far as the economic ramifications or what's gonna happen in these inner cities when you keep begging the government to uh, try to fix a problem that they've created in the first place. And you want to fight for these social causes, yet you want to go one step forward and eight steps back. So when I asked, who was initially, I was supposed to ask him a question because he had a question to answer, like comments, like questions, comments, concerns. And it ended up being a whole statement. You know, I started having this word vomit, of, you know, just a bunch of word salad. And that's when I realized that um, we had two completely different views when it came to actually um, one, taking human action and two, rallying for change you know, from the person that gave me the issue, in the, you know, in the first place. And, I, and right. I knew from that point, when I started talking to Eric, when I started talking to DL and talking to Pastor Tubb, it became clear that if there's not going to be anyone that I know that's going to be um, as concentrated on the issues that I personally see, 
which would be, you know, the expansion of the welfare state in Jacksonville, Florida, the fact that HUD Homes is getting millions of dollars in federal aid from the government, but yet we see from the CDC moratorium, people's property rights have been taken away or people's yeah. jobs have been taken away because it's deemed essential or non-essential. And my grandmother in her area, she lives on Moncrief, you know, in Jacksonville. It's, more, it's considered more of the inner city. And um, her house was broken into uh, not too long ago. And you know, thank the God she was okay and that's fine. You know, but it's the fact that when they put more legislation in these cities, it creates criminals by the stroke of a pen because you're creating destitution and people start to become desperate. They want answers and they want something to um, satiate them for the you know, to the next day. And right. crime comes to that. You know, th th things get desperate, they're desperate times, desperate measures, and that's what happens. So my goal is when I get into city council, I'm not saying if, but I'm saying when. When I get into city council, it's going to be repeal, repeal, repeal. It's going to be not instituting new laws. It's going to be taking away some because it's not even maybe a few pages to how to drive a two-ton motor vehicle that could definitely kill people if you uh, use the wrong way if you're not licensed. But to live in the city of Jacksonville, there's over 30 volumes of different books of mandates, laws, codes, and statutes that nobody knows about, you know? Wow. And that's a problem. Yeah, that's the issue. And that's how the crime goes up even higher. And number one statistic for crime in Jacksonville is not murder, it's not violent, but it's property crimes. Things are property related. And if you roll back all the finances that they're squandering, you can have more businesses being approved. You have more investments coming into these businesses to create more prosperity. You get to have uh, our dollar amount of the purchasing power of it being a lot more worth than what already is. You won't have to have to raise up the minimum wage every so often. And you won't have to do these things. Like Dollar Tree is now a buck 50 tree because of all this now. And we never thought that would even, yeah. it would even come to that. And uh, M Shack, a restaurant that was there since about 2011, you know, had okay burgers, but it was a small business that was going on with people. It was really nice. Yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> it was really you know, nice. and, uh, had okay you know, burgers, you know. It's okay, yeah, it's okay. all right. Burgers, hey, but, way to, pl way to do a plug for them. They're like, hey, look, this guy be in our commercial. Hey, they're not you know? horrible, <laughs> you know. <laughs> they're not, they're not the worst thing in the world, but they fed their families with you won't get sick in, in shack. <laughs> you know <laughs> you know maybe it's mild diarrhea but you know it was, it was a business and it was an honest living you know <laughs> it was an honest living and now that's shutting down um right. some uh, businesses because since they've been implementing these vaccine and mask mandates i've lost uh, about twenty eight thousand dollars a day because of these new mandates because it cut off that many uh, potential customers in there in, right. uh, in the region of jacksonville and so, yeah, yeah, you know, Harry Brown said almost 30 years ago now, uh, Harry Brown was our 2000 uh, presidential candidate. And he said, government is good at one thing. They break someone's legs. They steal their wallet. They use some of the money from the wallet to buy them crutches. And then they say, hey, look, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have these fancy new crutches I got you. And that, that's the problem. They create the conditions that require people to be dependent on government and then come swoop in to save the day from the people they just victimized. So right. it's great to see that that you know you are, are helping lead the way in, in speaking out against the welfare state and all of the, the crippling that happens before that happens. Tub, what, what is your, your reason for stepping in? What, what inspired you to get into this race? My goal is I want to make everybody who does a podcast have room to do this. Okay. That's, that's what I want you to do. I want to make it so that you can do this. Once everybody has to space that. to do an effective yeah. podcast, there we go. Uh, actually, what it was for me is, uh, is, you know, I pastor a church and our church got shut down because of permitting issues. An ongoing problem had nothing to do with us. And so they came in and shut us down. And so it was that going through the process of trying to get everything back and open again, going through all that, seeing how the city does things and how things cannot get moved around. It's like the, you have right. to know their system full on to have any hope to get it done. And so I started realizing the more I got involved, the more I started seeing this is kind of jacked up. That was kind of my thing. Like, you know what, we, we need to, and then by going through that, I found that the council members who should have been involved really didn't seem to care at all. And so kind of all of those things together says, you know what, um, it's time to do something because I'm a big advocate of you can't complain and do nothing. Like, right. and, 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 and I'll tell you what, I mentioned this at our conference. I said, man, I like to complain. Like, I'm a libertarian. We're going to complain. We're going to have issues. And, and then I finally realized, oh, man, I can't tell other people that don't complain and do nothing and then think I can complain and do nothing. And so for me, this was my chance to say, okay, I'm not going to just complain. I'm going to get involved and see about making the changes that have to be done. 
So here the city is talking about or was talking about giving $100 million to a multi-billionaire to start up some kind of shopping district or entertainment district while they're simultaneously shutting churches down for your safety, for your health. Now, bear in mind, when we got shut down, it wasn't a COVID issue. This was five years ago because of permitting issues from a fire chief oh. who had already had, yeah this, was, yeah, this had nothing to do with COVID. COVID was a whole nother mess for us to deal with. No, this was entirely different. Uh, and it's like I said, th that's the difference of the COVID stuff. You know, we all kind of muscled through it a little bit. And I think the COVID didn't set off our churches so much because everybody was getting it stuck to them at that time. You, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like, it, like, like exactly what Eric was saying. It's, it was the same yeah, what Eric for all of us. Through, right. So like what we were going through was just in a little overzealous fire chief who had little man syndrome and he uh, wanted to be bigger than he should have been. And um, he'd actually, he'd actually had city council pass things against him, stopping him from doing exactly what he came and did to us. Wow. Wow. So that's a perfect example of why, that's one of many examples of why the three of you need to get into, uh, into the Jacksonville city council. If you didn't, if you didn't need the number, the, if you didn't need any more, there you go right there. Now that you mentioned that, you're right. I'm going to run. I'm in. Like, let's, let's, let's make this happen. Like, I'm down for this now. Like, I'm in. You know what, Spike? Thank you, man. This is the greatest call ever. I'm in. Yeah, you got to run. Right idea, run. Spike. Great what were you idea. doing this whole time? Nothing. I was killing time. <laughs> that church wasn't keeping me busy enough. Well, I got nothing going on. My kids are grown. What am I going to do? Oh, now I know my purpose. Now I got it. Now, purpose. Honest, you should run for Jacksonville City Council. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. At large, number five. At large, number five. Now, here's At what large. I can say. The beauty of it is that man that's top left for us, that's going to be my council member. That's going to be my know. council member because I, I will live oh, in his Tracy. district. Yeah, is that that's Harrison? Right. No, not oh, that's Harrison. No, no, no. Right. I don't know who you, <laughs> you do understand. Uh, Tracy. Do you have a better way to describe it than the person to okay. your top left on the black man? Uh, the black uh, man uh, will be okay. there. Uh, I mean, you could have said the guy with the dark shirt, but whatever. That'll that'll do. Yeah, um, right. That's you. You're the guy with the dark shirt. You're not going oh, to be crap. <laughs> oh wow, you're right. Yeah. So you could have said, when... you, hey, you said, said the more melanin abundant gentleman. No, that's, I, did. I, said the, I did. I did. I said the black, the, the so black now, guy with the darker shirt. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I was going to say the most eloquently speaking yes. person on this podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, worse, that worse. also would have worked. Uh -huh. I, don't, that I, feel like, worked. I feel like this is getting worse and worse that the bigotry army in the Libertarian Party is going to be coming after me anytime now. Here we go. As soon as they see go. this, they're going to be like, oh, which hey, DL yeah, Harrison. Harrison. This is the kind of show yeah, that DL has. Harrison. Yeah. yeah. The thing is this, aren't we supposed to be the I feel party terrible of... for Harrison. We, we, hey, we're the Harrison guy. If you're clear Harrison's on this, we're going to be trying to find canceled. Harrison. That Harrison ruined everything. <laughs> and everybody's going to be trying to find him. I don't know who he is. More importantly, you do understand, his two-year-old son was in here, and you keep calling him Harrison, and he's going to think this isn't his daddy. All right? He's going to be like, <laughs> All right. I, I, think about I, the children, I, Sir Colin. <laughs> yeah, no, I should have thought of that. I should have. Oh so, my. Eric. Speaking to of get us back um, somewhere where we belong. Speaking of running for city council, <laughs> Eric. Um, yeah. So what are so what has been and, and moving forward? What do you think are? And I actually want to get all your thoughts on this, but we'll start with Eric. Eric, what is your has been and what will be your your main ways of campaigning? What are some of the strategies you're employing to get your message out there besides doing the show? And that's what uh. That's all we need. Right now, they have opened up. Um, opportunities for us to get signatures, petition signatures to get on the ballot outside of our district. Before they decided to do that, my plan was to go door to door and get there early and tell people, hey, look, I'm running. <laughs> and I went and I looked up our, you know, you get a uh, voter roll from uh, Supervisor of Elections Office. So I kind of knew where people were at. And I was planning to knock on doors, talk to them. And, you know, I did that a couple of times. And then they open it up to where we can get signatures anywhere outside of our district. So I've kind of changed my game plan because I'm assuming that's only going to be temporary. That's probably only going to last till the end of the year. But my goal was door to door and activism. And, you know, I, this month I'm doing the uh, 50 mile ruck mark challenge for, for uh, stop soldier suicide. And whenever I decided to do that, I took my campaign sign and stuck it on top of my rucksack. And just started walking down, walking around, you know, doing the, getting my miles in. And while we were out doing the park cleanup this last Saturday, 
I had someone stop my wife. I didn't hear it, but my wife's like, hey, who is he and what is he running for? And, you know, my wife's like, hey, Eric. And the lady that asked that was like, oh, he's here. So just getting out there in the community and getting yep. that exposure and being active and trying to make a difference, I think that's my strategy right now. And eventually it'll be going door to door to get signatures and talk with people because the election isn't until 2023. But we know right. we're not going to get any support from uh, a major party. We are getting support from our party. Our party right. is helping out tremendously, but we don't have the funding. We don't we don't have the fundraising that the Republicans or the Democrats have. So I know that my job is to get in front of people in my community. So that's my goal and my role, my strategy right now. That might change like uh, later, but um, also I'm trying to follow in your uh, footsteps, if you will, with the Facebook uh, social media algorithms, even though that probably just changed like two days ago, who knows how it works now. But the comments on local news stories yes. gets interaction with people that usually wouldn't see me. And I think uh, Pastor Tubb kind of showed me uh, the uh, the ropes on that, and it's helped out a lot. But so I don't know if that answers your question or not. It's kind of all over the place. But No, that does. That does. So first of all, 50 miles with a rucksack on? Yeah, yeah. So I'm br- you can break it up. I got the whole month of October to do oh, it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought yeah, you meant yeah, yeah. it once. I'm like, that's no, not no, no, no. That's like I, I, dude, I could drive 50 I miles it, with your rucksack. Yeah. So I was light infantry in the army, and I'm just gonna say wuss. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> hey, that's what people on there were like. Hey, we had to do 75 you- pounds, by the way. Yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, it was Isn't usually it- back in my day. It was a 45 pound ruck, but you also had full kit. You know what I mean? You're uh. Mm. all your body armor and See, all but that. also so here's the difference for, for us there was a height requirement they didn't have that when he was in so we didn't have to worry about <laughs> it or a weight requirement <laughs> for me uh leave and leave harrison, leave harrison alone. alone all right leave harrison alone harrison tell so, your mom to stop telling us what to do all right so, so eric that's that's fantastic man so i am a big fan of the door knocking especially for people running for citywide offices especially people running for because you're in individual districts that's yeah. especially where you have till 2023 that's a, a reasonable amount of time to be able to hit as many of those doors as possible and you can't substitute with ads you can't substitute that that in-person contact and we've seen a lot of libertarians yeah. who ran for city council races and mayoral races and they were way out funded by their republican and sometimes republican and democrat uh, uh competitors and they won because they were the one who got in front of everyone so that's a great strategy ron is that a similar strategy to you are you employing something different how, how are you how are you getting out there as far as going door to door that's definitely a strategy that i'm employing as well and uh, it's been working so far. I've been getting a lot of good reactions from where I am. Uh, my problem in the beginning was trying to mesh my message to the point where I try not to toe a line because I'm in a very sensitive district. It's a predominantly melanin abundant, uh, you know, area in Jacksonville. Darker shirt. And, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah you know, darker shirt. Everybody there has they a dark shirt. A lot of them wear dark shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. And you so, don't belong in this neighborhood, you know, boy. What's that white shirt? Get off out of here. Where's that? What, why are you wearing an orange shirt? Get out of here, boy. <laughs> What's that beige T-shirt, sir? <laughs> you know. And so, um, yeah, I try to uh, uh, try to um, initially try to mask it a little bit, and then I said, you know what? Let me just be a beacon of what I'm really believing in, because the authenticity started coming up a lot more when I was yep. doing that, as opposed to being, you know, robotic and you know, hitting da 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 and Pastor Tub and Eric and pretty much everybody that I'm running with and who are, who I speak to, they just tell me, hey man, just be a little more uh, genuine and authentic, man. Don't try to mask yourself too much or doctor yourself a little too much, you know, sell yourself yeah. as well. And I was afraid of that because of the backlash that I would get from the community, the surrounding community that I'm in. And, um, but then I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna, uh, cause first I was just going out and just saying things, but then I put in my uh, three things I'm running for would be to make Jacksonville, along with the effort with uh, Eric and Tub, to make Jacksonville a Second Amendment sanctuary uh, to end federal spying and to demilitarize the police department, you know, because there's no reason why they should be employing SWAT gear and, you know, military grade weaponry and training right. to, you right. know, you know, de-escalate um, simple matters that the community can already take care of within itself. And um, 
Yeah, when I started doing that and mastering my message, it really helped with talking to people. And, I, and uh, I did a uh, talk called The Libertarian Indictment of Alexander Hamilton. It was at the Dallas mm -hmm. Graham Library, and it had a pretty good turnout. And the people, and they got an even uh, a better response when I put the video on YouTube. And yep. I'm getting a lot of comments and messages, and emails saying, "Oh, I never, I never knew this. It was awesome. You know, pass the dang popcorn. You know, I mean, it was." It was really good, was and uh, they responded very well. Yeah, because <laughs> I was there. The I place. didn't get any popcorn. Like I was there when you I mean, did. I, there was no popcorn. I mean, it was a, it, it was, was it was it was like saying it was like you know it was like okay the fight's about to go down you know All because right, Alexander fine. Hamilton is one of my favorite one of my favorite historical punching bags, and it was one of those series that I did. Uh, it was part one of the Sacred Cow series in history. Yeah, and um, that's another kind of avenue that I'm going in because that's something that I'm. I'm particularly good at you know, getting research, getting um, data and statistics on things, especially historical figures and people, and how I could mesh that with my message to put things in a proper perspective, kind of give it a framework. In that, and it really works a lot because now you can see the things that happened back then and how they mirror what's happening right now to bring a perspective of, hey, it's happening again and again and again. You want this to happen, you know, this way and that way. Like when I was making a yeah. case for um, for the statues not being taken down, I was like, okay, well, anytime they took down statues or tried to erase a particular part of their culture, you know, Stalin follows, you know, uh, Mao Zedong follows, um, you know, these things happen. Um, Adolf follows, and, and uh, usually ethnic cleansing happens afterwards. So anytime you erase a particular part of history, even in France, you have the Versailles building that, that took generations with the King Louis uh, descendants are coming up to the 14th and uh, up till they had Bastille Day where the French Revolution happened, they still didn't take down the Bastille Palace. You know, I mean, they still keep it up because it's part of their culture, it's a part of their history, it's part right. of their heritage. And right. um, about thousands of people that it took to build that and make that, that died under his, you know, tutelage. And they said, we're going to keep uh, it up in remembrance of that. Mm -hmm. Tracy's uh, YouTube channel is way, uh, way more in depth than, uh, I would say mine is because I don't have one. That's because you got zero YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah. And, I, and, Dude, I, and I put a YouTube channel just for, you know, just for those type of things. And um, yeah, the thing, yeah. well, my initial problem was is that um, I, uh, you know, being introverted, I, I didn't want to put myself out there, but I started getting used to the rhythm of putting out videos of topics, uh, how to reach people in that way and going door to door. And it's really opened up um, a lot of things. So that's kind of been my cycle. I put in a topic that I make videos about, and then I will put together, um, you know, a, a talk about it. It's like I did with the Alexander Hamilton thing. I'll do another one, bringing in a case for a certain type of stuff. Because what I want to do as a councilman is to have a lot more transparency with my constituents about what's happening and what's not happening. And I think that uh, transparency and communication is lost within a city council because they just they just implement things without the knowledge of their constituents. And they'll give you one chance or a couple of chances to vote on it and talk about it or vent about it and they move on forward with it anyway. Because they're not doing it for them; they're doing it for the ones that fill in their pockets. So I want exactly. to go in complete reverse of that, you know. Exactly. Uh, that's, that's a strategy, and it's a strategy that's been working uh, pretty well with me. So, yeah. That's good. That's good, Eric. You were going to say something. Well, I was going to, and I, we don't got to get into that yet. I think Tracy was alluding to uh, what was just recently on the news. Uh, it was last city council meeting. He talks about them giving people an opportunity to talk on something, but they voted at 11 p.m. at night, so the end of the council meeting, and they always do this where they, whenever there's something controversial, they'll save it for the always. last part so of the council meeting. Everybody pulls meeting. out. They don't have to they don't, yeah. they kind of sneak it all in because yeah. nobody wants to be yeah. there that late. Mm -hmm. You got to go to work in the morning. Exactly. And, and you know, yeah, the, that's, uh, that's actually one of my complaints, because if you go, I don't believe that land use and zoning should be with city council. We have a whole other separate portion of the city that takes care of that type of stuff, but the city council keeps doing with it. And when you go to a council meeting, you'll know, Eric, because you go all this thick in time, and they'll give you this packet. It's like this thick, and most all of it is land use and zoning stuff. And then they'll yeah. finally mm -hmm. get to the things that people care about. They'll do all that stuff way less, because they know the people honestly don't want to go down way through all that stuff to finally get to the things that they care about. I think that's right. well played. So I think either we get land use and zoning stuff out of there completely, which they ought not be dealing with, or at least yeah. shift the way things go so that people who actually do go to work and do have other things to do, we could take care of the things that they're interested in and then take care of the First, business. And then after. do yeah. the other stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if that's a legal thing, a state law, whatever that 
I know that you have to have public hearings for land use and zoning, but I think what Tub is saying is make it a completely separate meeting, a yep. different because they already have like subcommittee meetings and whatnot or committee meetings. Mm -hmm. Right. So make it kind of like one of those. It might have to be on a Monday night at 5 p.m. so that most people, because that's a huge complaint. And the first time that they tried voting to give Shad Khan $100 million is that it wasn't transparent at all. And working class people couldn't show up to the meetings. Well, they redid it so it didn't pass back last year. They essentially redid the plan again for a practice center. And they actually, it was more of a PR press run. And Tub and I went to one of the meetings where the Jaguars are essentially trying to sell their plan, trying to convince people. And I went to like five of the meetings. You went to like all of them, didn't you? I know. Good Lord. Yeah. Well, yeah. The I, dude I started knowing the, the guy running it. So yeah, Eric no, walked in, he goes, yeah. oh. <laughs> Like, here we yeah, go again. They, they, they were like, all right, I'm freaking tired. But, I mean, <laughs> I was on a first-name basis. It probably wasn't a good thing because I'm definitely not getting any funding from them now. No, no, funding's but, uh, not coming from them. That's not yeah. happening. You, you wouldn't even want it. from them, yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, and they, and they, they definitely had to change the way that they did it the first time because people called them out mm -hmm. saying, hey, you didn't go through, I don't know, the city, whatever, the some committee. And so the second time they were more transparent. Well, the second time it ended up passing, but it was for a different plan. But we all know it's really just corporate welfare. You know what I mean? Really just our elected officials giving their lobbyists some of their money back. So, yeah, yeah, Percent actually quite a bit more. It, it's, it's quite, it's actually a, a much bigger investment. You know, at the federal level, uh, corporate cronies give away a couple combined a couple billion dollars a, uh, every election cycle in funding and received trillions of dollars back um, at the at the city level. They might give tens or even hundreds of thousands and they're giving they're getting millions, tens of millions, hundred million back. And it's uh, it, it is it's, it's corporate welfare. It is it is universal basic income for billionaires. Uh, and, and the rest of us are, are forced to pay for it. Uh, Tub, what is some of the stuff that you're doing besides your upcoming indictment of Woodrow Wilson? What are some of the oh. other things that you're doing <laughs> yeah. uh, to, to get your name out there? Well, besides that one, I'm kind of just chilling at the house, hoping people come knocking on my door and ask me if I want to run for office. Um, actually, what, <laughs> what, what, I, what I've done, because um, I, I'm citywide. Being at large, I don't have, I'm not inside one city district, so I would have to cover okay. the whole city. So door knocking for me is not feasible. Um, so for me, kind of like what Eric was talking about, um, I got stuck getting back on Facebook again. And so by being on there, you follow the news, things that are coming through, go in and comment. And, and I've truly found, like I actually, even earlier today, we were just talking about it before we came up here. So I got on there, there was a thing that came through, I commented on it briefly, like, hey, you know, kind of here, we all, it was kind of a, why don't we look back and look at the bigger picture of what's going on here and what, and what really is happening with government and what they're doing to us. And so then people would go and they, they, they react to it. You, you know what I'm saying? They, yep. Cause it's Facebook and they'll do the reaction. So then what I learned was, okay, once they do that, go invite them to my page. And, and so what started yep. happening was, okay, I do that. They get, now they, they say, they read this, they go, hey, that kind of makes sense. Okay, then you, you give them a direction to my other content and they're kind of, they start following and they, and they, for the most part, they stay. And so we have that. Um, we have the idea. I started a small campaign of, of uh, yard signs. Now we are a long way away from yard signs. We're a year away right. from needing yard signs. But what I've done is on my yard sign, on, in fact, you probably, you might've seen it on my Facebook page where it's very basic. It's just mm -hmm. uh, check out tubforjacks.com. So get to the website. The website will get you to Facebook. You can kind of do it. I just want to gear everybody there. So we started a small campaign of, hey, who's willing to put some of these signs out in their yards? So I bought some and people snatched them up. The yep. good thing about it is they're just, they're very different parts of the city. So now it's kind of getting out there a little bit. So we have that. So I've been starting to kind of meet with some people that are already inside of my circle. Start within my own circle. Start saying, okay, who's down for this? These type of things. And we have these things that we've started scheduling out now called a fuss and discuss. And the fuss and discuss says, hey, are you willing to bring people into your house that we sit down for a few minutes and kind of go through these things? And, and, and what I really want to do, I want to hear what they say is the problem, not me telling you, once again, here's the problem. Here's how we'll yep. fix it. Yep. So, yep. Um, so we've started scheduling these fuss and discusses out. 
And, and I kind of started learning. I'm like, wait a minute, people are down for these. So then there's actually just the other day we were heading out of church and there's this restaurant that we go to, a local restaurant that we go to quite often. And they have my cards sitting up there because I put these wherever they'll let me put my little palm cards, I put them there. And so I keep some in there and um, I was getting ready to head out. And I said, hey, I said, do y'all mind? I said, I explained to them the fuss and disgust that we're doing. And I said, hey, would y'all mind doing one here at the restaurant? They're like, let's go. Like they, they were full on open to it. And they're like, hey, we can reserve the place, whatever you want to do. I'm like, Let's do it. So these type of things will start doing it. And so as we can kind of get these things going, like now we're at the scheduling point of these. We have people who committed to it. Now we're at the scheduling point. So we can kind of start getting the word out that way there because once again, we don't have the funds. Naturally, as libertarians, we don't have all this money coming in that we could just place a bunch of signs and draw all kinds of attention to it. So we're just, because we are a little bit of the way out still, we're trying to take advantage of these smaller ones. I guess truly, if you want to call it, I always hated to use the term, but grassroots. It's yeah. truly, let's start right down here with just these yep. normal everyday people that we know that run in the same circles. And so that's yep. kind of been our thing. And, and we know that as we start getting closer, you start ramping these things up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Start being more intentional about, hey, mm -hmm. how are we scheduling these, getting in front of other people and just kind of doing along, along those lines. So right now, we're really just starting smaller groundwork. Just let's get the word out there. Let's get things moving. But I, I have found, I think as we all have, is Facebook matters. And yeah. and I and I don't I don't want to give you too much credit here, Mr. Cohen. I, I don't no, want I, 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 <laughs> no. but mm. uh, let let there be very clear. It's appreciative that you're willing to come on. And even sometimes if it's the simplest of reactions and stuff along those lines, um, it, 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 it's helping. Like it's helping. And, and so yeah, that, well, that's the goal that, that, that I'm appreciative of, but not so much. That I'm going to be nice. Not to like, you, a, got... not like really appreciative. No, 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 not like, like that. I mean, it's listen, like, you it's said, okay that that's happening. Let's be very clear. You've, you've gotten well, zero dollars. You've gotten zero dollars into my campaign. So you're just okay. Still, you, you know, you're, yeah, not, yeah. you're not bad. You're not bad. You're, you're, no, you're I'm trying to get at least $5 into your campaign by the time this thing is done. So yes. I'm, I'm five, I'm five away. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'm just five away. So Eric and Ron, I know that you guys are on somewhat more limited time. So, but I want to give you guys a chance to talk about, um, I, I think something that's really interesting to me is the three of you are essentially running a campaign together and mm -hmm. I'm interested to get, well, the two of your thoughts, we can talk to Harrison's friend later, but when, uh, I, the, the, the two of your thoughts on what that has looked like, you know, what it has looked like, yes, you're running your separate campaigns, but you're also kind of leveraging, uh, to run as sort of this, this uh, you know, three-part campaign, what that has looked like and what that's meant to you and how that's helped. So uh, for me, like the things we've been doing together, like the park cleanups and the signature drive that we did together, it's good exposure because we're a team. At, at the uh, signature drive, we all kind of split up and we went to different areas, but people showing up to the Riverside Arts Market, they came from all different directions. So they got hit with a Libertarian cannon over here, and someone with a couple of petitions for each guy, and that kind of happened, moved around, and we all got some signatures. For me and Tracy, it's going to be a little bit easier than for Tub because we probably only need between 700 and 1,000 signatures to get on the ballot. It hasn't been confirmed yet, the size of the district, right. the census and all that, but I, my goal is at least 1,000. So that's what – it really helped having all of us out there wearing gold shirts. No, my, mine's this special one right here. Everyone can see that. But the other guys had the Libertarian Party of Duval County shirts on. It's just Libertarian on the back. Sometimes that helps. Sometimes that doesn't. But yeah. we got a lot of signatures. I, I got about 100 that day. And then these park cleanups, seeing the Libertarian Party out there and, like we say, yeah. taking human action. Like, you know, mm -hmm. if we want to limit the size of government, then, well, that requires volunteerism. You know what I mean? We all have to get out there in the community and – do voluntarily what we pay the government to do if we want to see the size of government shrink. So yep, I absolutely. think, and then we're getting, it's a team effort, you know what I mean? And then like, whenever I share things, if it's something that I can tag Tub or Tracy and I do, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. same thing with you, Spike, uh, you, I kind of harassed you in a comment <laughs> section on one of my Facebook posts a while ago, only because I was jealous of all the love Tub was getting. You know what I mean? But then 
You, I don't know if you know this, and, and maybe you do, but you commented on one of mine, and you said, you know, like, that's why we need – because I shared one of your posts, you commented, and you said, mm-hmm. that's why we need you, Tracy, and Tub, and your winning smiles. That day I got 100 extra followers to my page. And I understand that that's not local people in Jacksonville. Some of them were, though. Some people mm-hmm. were, like, so excited to see this happening in Jacksonville. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't just – outside of Jacksonville. Some people are like, oh my God, the Liberty Time Party's doing something. But right. it was also the people in the Liberty Movement seeing that human action, seeing us actually doing stuff. Mm-hmm. It definitely helped. And you know, like the algorithms and the likes and the shares and the comments, mm-hmm. all that boosts it. So really appreciate that. I don't I think I know it's you it is all, no, you did. You did. And it's all, it's always good. It's always preferable to get as much local support as possible, but anyone in the Liberty movement who's willing to help y'all push your message forward is a good thing. Ron, what has running in, in a sort of a tripartite campaign like this? What has that been like for you? Yeah. Uh, running in this triumvirate, it's, uh, it's pretty special because it's the cohesion that you don't see that often uh, right. that I've noticed in the Liberty movement and that nucleus ends up bringing that orbit around us and it's been igniting people in a way that I haven't seen before and it's really special and it's inspiring people to do the same thing that we're doing taking human action coming out with the city's park cleanups which was at first our, how our vice chair uh Marcus Rita how he says it's not really that sexy you know it's it's you know a park cleanup or whatever but it's been getting so much more exposure people around us they see us um in a unit and in uniform seeing us doing this and the third we're doing it together we're doing it out of love for the community that's around us without without even asking for anything in return. And then see, there's a this is a, a moment that I knew that what we're doing matters. It was a fact that in Sheffield Park, this uh, it's on New Berlin, it's in, in Jacksonville, of course. And we clean it up. It looks spick and spam, it's spotless, everyone's having a good time, the kids are playing football, there's a barbecue, and everyone's just you know, having a good time. And they set up 14 recycling. Uh, bins around the, uh, around the city so that the defunct trash pickup line that we pay for out of our tax dollars doesn't get it up and they'll just put it over here until they can figure something out or at least they can try to decide what they're going to do with the money that we've been spending on them and so they say hey we're going to put it right here for y'all in every park in the city where everyone gathers and does fellowship so we clean it up and it looks just beautiful and then the very next day not even 24 hours you know, everyone comes there, dump it, garbage. None of it is recyclable. It's uh, styrofoam, it's furniture, it's right. plastics, whole trash cans, you know, inside these bins, nothing recyclable or anything. But it's the fact that government put its, uh, puts in legislation that says, we're going to kick the can down the road, we're gonna parlay responsibility and sweep it under the rug. And then we're gonna give you all the incentive to take away from the front yards what we failed to pick up in the first place. And then you reallocate them over here. And so it makes right. it like an even bigger mess. And now Jacksonville is looking like a slum village. And just so happens that uh, our vice chair goes up there and checks it out. He's calling us and he's telling us, hey man, you gotta get down here, man, because the park that we had just cleaned up not even 12 hours ago has been getting trashed. And now the news uh, stations, you know, news for Jack's action news, first coast news, they come up and we show them the photos of us being there that we do, that we do every week. You know, uh, we put on our Facebook pages that we're here, we're, you know, doing this at a third, blah, 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 follow us here. Now they're following us and our actions from the fact that libertarians were here. Now they're coming and looking for us. Now they're noticing things that we do ahead of what the government has been done or what they, whatever. And it's opening up the floor to show the failure that is big government. And that's what I think is um, really special. And we speak to these people, these newscasters and these videographers and the interviewers, they're inspired by what we're doing. They ask us questions of, hey, man, if you um, you know, want us, want us to uh, follow you guys on whatever y'all are doing, um, to give us a story that we can um, cover, man, let us know. And now it's expanding into news stations. Now, it's not just us putting up these photos. It's going to be them putting up these videos and covering it to the rest of the city, broadcasting our actions. That's going to be um, really, uh, really special. And it's from us three running together that brought so much attention in the first place. Because it's when you see people in your front yards, in your backyards, in your neighborhoods doing things out of love and adoration, just for the hell of it, it makes a big difference. And, you know, you don't see anybody wearing red or blue. You know, you don't see any elephant or ass going up in there and doing it themselves. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, you know, it's us taking that initiative 
you know? So right. that's what I've been noticing. And that's how it's looked like for me doing this. And for me, I'm not used to asking for help. I'm not used to people, you know, throwing me alley-oop and go ahead and dunk it with 360 windmill. It's just kind of foreign to me. But being with these loving people, I realized that, you know, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to, um, you know, get a helping hand, like with you, Spike, and you putting this, you know, just saying, hey, and just putting your, putting your face in, in the comment section, just giving me all of a sudden 140 new followers and new subscribers. I'm like, oh my goodness, oh my God. And <laughs> something that was over, you know, <laughs> you know, it was just overwhelming. Like you you're know, so dreamy. Like, uh, you're just a dreamy. You know just put your like, face oh right there, just yeah. changes yeah. the yeah. world. So, 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 you know Pat, Pat, like, so, oh my God. So, but in Tub. Closing, but in, but in oh, closing. No, go ahead, go ahead, oh, 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 don't cut no. him off. Listen. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. In I'm closing. Pulling, I'm pulling a Harrison. <laughs> but, um, but in closing, you know, that's how it's looked like for me. And um, that's what I hope it resonates with other people in the same as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's great. That's I'm, I love to see the cohesiveness here. Tub, exactly how many followers have I gotten you? Because they both know. They both know. Do you know? Three. Wow. Three. I appreciate it. But those are the three. <laughs> those are super followers. Those are the They're biggest. Those are the These most, are the all-in followers. <laughs> those are the most impactful followers. Wait a minute, With them, are, the I'm just doing. I'm doing quantity. With wait, you, wait. I want quality, quality. followers. So I've told people. I get the, they get the. They have a bunch of junk. Hey. But I got the good. I got the diamonds. So, I got you hey. the three, got me three mega donors to the, your campaign. No, nobody said donors. You hey. said followers. All right, let's make that <laughs> very time. clear. Give him time. You yeah. got to close the deal. I just brought him to you. Oh, got it. No, hey, here's the thing. Real, real quick. Sorry, go ahead. Tom. No, you're good. No, go, because you got limited time. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah go ahead. I was going to say, Spike, real quick. We got five minutes. What is some advice you have for us for social media? Um, how should we engage people in the comments section? Um, how do we engage people outside of our immediate circle real quick if you could help us out with that or so when it have? comes to social media if you guys are i would follow every single you know if on your pages not your personal profiles because they don't get the same reach for this kind of stuff for for your pages follow all of your local media follow all of your local elected officials follow anything oh. like any local organizations nonprofits. Uh, uh, local Second Amendment groups, uh, local if there's a local NAACP, anything, all the civic groups, all of that, so that you're commenting on their stuff. And it can be anything as simple as, you know, if there's a, a new Toys for Tots drive, say, oh, you know, we, if you're planning on being there, say, you know, I'd love to be there. Let me know how I can help. As much as possible, let the normies that are on Facebook see what you're doing. Facebook is unique compared to Twitter and, and Instagram and things like that, because Facebook is filled with like just normal everyday average people that aren't quite as specialized on the other types of social media sites. And so you can go on there and just be, you know, the average person who's following, you know, the Jacksonville news stations or the Jacksonville elected officials or the Jacksonville local organizations, they're almost entirely going to be from Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. So you've got to captivate, like who else mm -hmm. is going to follow the, the Jacksonville Rotary club or w whatever whatever jacksonville tv station or radio station but someone who probably either lives in jacksonville or has loved ones who lives in jack who live in jacksonville mm -hmm. and to get in there and to and to make you know relevant comments on on you know the issues that they're talking about you don't have to spam them you don't have to do every time there's a post but if there's something relevant to what y'all are trying to do including building community then you definitely need to be in there uh everything else that you guys are doing sounds like it's perfect what you what you're doing you're doing the door knocking you're doing you know uh you're making videos uh you know you're hosting events for people to come out and give you their concerns i, I guess the only other thing i'd say is and i mean you have plenty of time to do this start making connections and it might be initially first contact through Facebook, make local connections with people uh, that have organizations like Second Amendment groups, anti-mask mandate groups, anti-vaccine mandate groups, uh, you know, any anti anti-war groups. Uh, even though technically you're not going to be deciding on that, these are still people that have common cause with you. You know, the, the people or or if there's a group, if you find out there's like a Facebook group or something that's against this hundred million dollar carve out for the J Jaguars, get in there. Those are the places you need to be because you already have common cause with them. And if you can show that that you support that they you support them on something they already care so passionately about, you're that much closer to getting their vote. But it sounds like, I mean, honestly, just keep doing what you're doing. It sounds like you guys are doing some really fantastic stuff. So, we're, I mean, I, I think amazing. you guys are doing great. Yeah, we're amazing. Yeah, no, you're people. great. Yeah, we're great. You're great. Yeah. <laughs>
right. No, uh, you're, you are beautiful. You're all beautiful. With that being said, that's why yeah. I was fixing my hair earlier. Joni loves Chachi. Like, what is going on I, here? I'm sorry, Eric. I what, appreciate what was that? your time, man. I was just saying, appreciate your time. I'm sorry I got to cut it short, but I got to go, guys. Um, but Spike, thank you for coming and hanging out with us and really helping us out with our campaigns. I appreciate it. BL, I'm happy Club, to love y'all. Tracy, love you. Spike, love you, too, brother. love you. Bye. Love you too, man. Thank you, Eric. All right. Yeah. Have a good one. You too. So, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, it sounds like you guys are kind of doing everything I'd recommend. I, I, I I'm honestly, I mean, DL, I'm sure you have some questions or, or comments for, for these two. I honestly am just incredibly impressed with what they're doing. It seems like they're doing everything that, that they can. So actually, including- sir, and before, well, DL, well, before you um, yes. pre answer, I want to go ahead and do my farewell to you guys. And, oh, okay. Um, sorry. Spike, I do- no, 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 it's fine. I just want to say it. Um, same with Eric. I appreciate you uh, coming in. And talking to us and taking the you know, your cut of your time. It took a lot for you to get here, and I definitely appreciate the effort. Um, I'm really honored uh, for you um, helping us out and giving us this advice. It was very much needed. Tub, DL, love you guys. Love you, Spike, and um, we'll be keeping in touch. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to libertydadpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head on over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media network, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 10 p.m. While you're there, be sure to check out other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Find me over at libertydad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.